Today, we're going to use the Web Audio API to make an audio sprite. And what is an audio sprite? Well, that's basically just one long file of, of different samples or different sounds split up like maybe two, three seconds between them. And then you only have to load one file into the browser and you can just tell uh, the, the, the computer where every single sample is and then you can just play every single sample. That way you don't have to load a lot of different samples. You can just load one file and then you can access the different sounds that are within that sample. And that's why it's called an audio sprite. Maybe you have already tried making audio sprites with another JavaScript uh, library. Uh, I have been doing that myself. I've been using Howler.js, which is really great in that. But Howler also comes with a lot of different other features that you can use, which is awesome. But I have actually only been using it for audio sprites. So I thought I would try to figure out how I can make this using the Web Audio API. And now I'm going to share that with you. And this is what we're going to be making. Yeah, let's get started on uh, creating this silly little thing. Okay, so I have opened up my text editor and in my case here, it's uh, Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever you want. I already created three files an index HTML where I link to uh, the app.js file or JavaScript file that's out here in the root as well. And then we have the styles.css and I'm loading the JavaScript asynchronously, which means that um, that the browser should, if possible, load the script asynchronously, as it says right here. Uh, thank you, Visual Studio Code, for that information. So before we get started coding, um, I want to tell you a little bit more about this uh, audio sprite thing that I mentioned in the introduction. If you have a look at this file here, this is just one audio file, but there are many different sounds inside this audio file. They're just separated by silence here. So if I start playing this, you should be able to... So this is just A, B, C, the whole alphabet. And actually, I got that just from uh, from Google. Uh, I just typed in the alphabet here, and then I clicked this one, and then I just recorded my computer's audio. And then I got it into this audio editing software, and then I cut out every single one of these samples, so I got them individually, because I didn't know exactly if there was the same amount of space between all of them, and it looks like there's not. So I wanted to create an audio sprite, another file just like this, but where I know exactly how much space is between the sounds and how, what, what is the, um, the length of uh, the duration of, of each sound inside this uh, audio file. And the good thing about using an audio sprite is that you can you don't have to, if you need, if you have a piano, for example, a piano has about 88 keys. And if you wanna, um, if you wanna load 88 sounds, there can be so many problems. You have so many server requests, you have, uh, you're gonna get a lot of problems, maybe some of the sounds won't uh, load and then you're going to miss uh, a key here and there and a sound here and there. So th this is a pretty good idea to use an audio sprite. And I have been using, as I said, Howler.js before, which is a great library for manipulating audio and, and playing audio and things like that. But um, it's if you only need audio sprites and that's all you need, then you might as well go ahead and code it yourself with the Web Audio API. So let's get started on doing that. So before we get started on coding, we need some audio to work with. And I, as I said, I have magically copied a, a folder here and I have all of the different um, letters of the alphabet in here as a WAV file. So A, B, C, D, and all the way to Z here or Z, wherever you're from. Um, and we wanna make one file out of that. So that's what I'm doing right here. In order to use this audio sprite thing here, you need to install it first. I have a separate video on that, my uh, drum kit tutorial number two, I think, and I'm gonna link to that in the description below. So please check that out if you don't know how to do that because you're gonna need to, to do some things before you can do this. But this is out of the scope of this video, so I'm just gonna do it right here. So I, I'm just gonna explain what I'm doing here. I'm calling this audio sprite, and then I'm telling that I want to export uh, the file types WebM and MP3. We're only gonna be using one of them for this tutorial, but I might as well get both of them. So, and then I'm telling the format, I wanna use Howler 2 format. There are different formats you can use. And then I want to output it as ABC. And then I wanna take all of the files in the folder that I'm already in, all the files that have a WAV extension, and I'm gonna create a one audio file from that. Let's just see how it, how it works. First of all, I need to be inside the folder that I'm going to, uh, where the files are located. So I'm just gonna CD into that. I'm gonna try it, I forgot about that. So CD, A, 
B, C, and let's just see, we have something in there. Yes, we got all the files here, and then I can get this back. So audio sprite export, web mp3 format, holler 2, output uh, A, B, C, and wave. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna hit enter, and then something happens here. It says all done. So what it actually does here, now you can see some other files appeared in, in this folder right here. I get the one called A, B, C, JSON, uh, and that is just kind of a file. I'm just gonna close down the terminal here. This is just a file. I can see the source is ABC. Uh, that's the file name. And uh, inside here, you can see, okay, we have the sprite A and the B and the C. And this is where it starts in the audio file. So this is milliseconds. So in way in the beginning of the file, the first um, part of the file is lasts about 453 milliseconds and that's the letter a and then b and then c and so on and so forth so what we're going to need here we don't really need all of this stuff we don't need the single files anymore i'm just going to be using the webm here so let me just take this one and just pull it out of the folder if i can down here just to the root folder that's fine and um, then i am actually just going to do the same thing with the json here uh, okay, got that out here as well. And then I am going to just delete this folder, just delete the ABC folder. So it's gone right now. That's it. So now we have that. We're going to be using this later on, but let's get started on the JavaScript. So let's start in the app.js file. And the first thing I want to do is make a function or actually a constructor function, or in this case, a class, which is kind of the same thing. Um, I'm going to call it Sprite so we can instantialize uh, new instances of uh, this audio sprite later on. Oops, not like that. Curly braces. And then we're going to set up a constructor here. And inside here, we will set up this, um, this class here. And um, first of all, we need to pass something in. I want to pass in an object here. So I'm just going to type in settings object. And I'm going to talk about in a minute what we're going to pass in. And then I'm just going to set some of the things here. So I'm going to set this on in the instance, the source, because that's what we want. We want um, the source to be equal to settings object source, src. And then we also want to have this samples equal to settings object samples so the settings object is going to look like this the object that we pass into the constructor here we want first of all we want uh, the source attribute and that is where is the file located so uh, that is just going to be something like this it's going to be abc webm so abc dot webm which is an audio format and then the next one we're going to have something called Sprite. Let me just put it in so it looks a little bit more like JSON, S-P-R-I-T-E. And that is also going to be a um, an object here. And let me just put quotes around this as well. Let's actually store this one in a variable. So const, let's call it ABC, because it's the alphabet, equals this, just so it looks a little bit better. We don't get the errors. So inside here, uh, remember when we made this, let me open this JSON thing here. You can see we have the sprite and then we have A, B, C, and we can see this starts at zero and lasts until this uh, and starts here. And then it uh, its the duration is 445 milliseconds and so on and so forth. So let's just grab this whole thing here. Let's grab this whole object, the sprite object, and just copy it to our app.js here. I'm not going to need these now. Something like this. Okay, so now we got all the data here. We got uh, the source and we got the sprite. And the sprite is just um, another object where you have the different properties, A, B, C. So that's the different sounds inside the, the audio file. So that's what we want to take in here up in the sprite. I'm just oh, close this down so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, so now we set this up here. We could start and to initialize the, um, the web audio API up here. But because we're going to need to load files and request some different things that works asynchronously, uh, and we can have an asynchronous constructor function in, um, in a class here, that doesn't work. So I'm going to have to say this in it. Uh, and that is another function here or method that I'm going to put down here. And that one I can make asynchronous. So I'm going to say async and then in it. 
and that is just going to be a normal function or method so here we want to set up the web audio api so i'm just going to type a comment here set up web audio and the way that the web audio api works is you need to have a source a source can be many things it can be the microphone you have hooked up to your computer it can be um it can be an oscillator so you have a if you made like a um, synthesizer with the web audio api or you can also in, in our case it's going to be an audio file um so that will be the source so you have a source and then you need to do something about that stuff and you're gonna have to put it to the destination and um let's see if i could spell and then the destination is uh that's just your speakers uh your sound card the computer will figure that out yourself whatever it is that you have plugged in but you don't always need to put it to a destination if you just need to do some data processing on the on the audio that and you don't want to play it you don't have to put it to the destination but here we want to actually play out the audio um to our speakers in order to use the web audio api we gotta we gotta instantiate it and we can go ahead and we can say const uh, audio context that's what we need uh we need an audio context from the web audio uh, api and then we can do some things with that and that is located on the window the global window and it's called audio context so just to get that and the reason i'm putting it into a, a constant here is that in order to take care of older browsers or webkit browsers i am going to um also type in here's so a window and webkit audio context and that is actually it, that's just because okay if this one uh, exists then this one will never execute but if this one does not exist then we can just go ahead and and use this one instead so that's for a bit older browsers not right now nowadays i think it's on uh on all browsers is directly on the window audio context but uh, in the old days it was webkit audio context that you had to use for webkit browsers so anyways um, now it takes care of that if there are some compatibility issues there and then i am going to set on this instance here so i'm going to set this and i'm going to call it ctx for context and i'm going to instantiate this uh, audio context so let's say new audio ctx and that's the one we get up here. So now we have it on the instance. We can always uh, refer to our CTX on this instance here. So that's great. But now we have to do some more. We have to get uh, we have to get the file. And I think it would be nice to now we just initialize the audio, the web audio API here, the audio context. And then I think we should load the file. So I'm just going to type out load file. But I don't think we should do it in here. I think we should uh, write another function or another method where we get the file just so it's separate a little bit so before we put anything here um, down here i'm going to make another method that's also going to be async and by the way this is async and you'll see in just a moment why we want it to be async uh, but this is asynchronous and it's going to be called get file and we don't need to pass anything in here inside here uh first i want to request the file I am going to use the fetch API, which is built into JavaScript, modern JavaScript. And I'm going to get from that, I'm going to get a response. Um, and that is going to be, and the reason I put async here is that, so now I can use await. So I'm going to type out await, uh, and then I'm going to use the fetch API, and I'm going to go get the, this source. And remember, this is what we pass in here. We pass in this source, and then up here, we are going to set this source to the settings object that we're passing in and the source, which will be the same as, as this one down here. Uh, so we're using the fetch API, and we are going to get a response. And the reason I'm using a wait here is because it takes some time. It's going, we are gonna get a file here, and, uh, and this will not continue executing this function from this line until um, it has been, uh, until we get a response so we can check out this response uh, actually let's just try and console log this response and we need to call this one as well so here where we load the file what i want to do i want to put all of this stuff that i'm going to uh, return from this function i'm going to put that into an audio buffer so we're going to set um 
the audio buffer on this instance. If I can spell buffer. And we're just going to await this get file. So that is this one here we're calling here. And because this is also asynchronous, we are going to use await. And that's why we also have async up here. So I hope this all makes sense. Let's try and console log the response. So we need to make a new instance of this. So that's going to be new um, new sprite. And what we're going to pass in is actually this don't one that we have right here. So I'm just going to take all of this stuff here and, um, and pass that into the sprite. So I'm just going to copy and paste this or just delete it actually. Uh, cut it here and then I am going to set this one so we get the ABC is going to be equal to this so we instantiate the a new sprite and put it in the ABC variable so I'm just going to paste this in here and then we should have access to that oh that's one too many here that's better okay I'm going to save that and um, then we need a way to uh, just let's just see if this actually works because I'm consoling um, the <laughs> response here. So let's click on right click on the HTML file and open with live server. And then I should be able to to see what's going on. Of course, it's a total blank screen here. And but if I open up my console and I have a look here, oh, I have a problem here. Settings op C is not defined. That's because it's settings op C. Or is that this object, of course? That's a J. Okay, let's see what works now. So, on card reference server settings, J is not defined. That's not so weird. Or is that located at settings J? Oh my goodness. So let's let's fix that <laughs> again. Settings object OBJ. Something like that. Okay, let's go back to the browser and see what happens. Okay, as you can see, I actually get a response here. And you can see what, what kind of response it is. Um, we always get like uh, one of the properties is okay. And if it's okay, if everything worked, then it's going to be uh, true. If not, then it's going to be false. So we can, uh, if let's try and, and go back here. I'm just going to change the file name here. Just put a D in here. And then I'm going to save that and go back. And if we have a look again, we can see that uh, it's uh, it's not okay. The okay is false. So we can use that for uh, for checking our errors. So let's let's do that here. Instead of console logging this, we are going to uh, put in if statement. So if the response OK is not OK, that's why I put the, the bang operator here, or oh, the not operator, then we're just going to throw a new error. So throw new error. And that error, I'm going to use template strings. And because I want both of the I want the status text. I don't know if you noticed here, but you can also see you have a status text here. It's okay. So if it's if you couldn't find the the file, it, it's it will tell you that the file could not be found. So I want to get uh, I want to get both the um, the URL that it couldn't find and then the response text. So here I'm just gonna use the dollar sign and I'm gonna do like this. We're gonna take the response and we're gonna take the URL and then after that. In here, we're just going to use another variable, and that is going to be the response. Oops, response, and that is going to be the status text. Okay, so instead of throwing the error here, I'm just going to take this here and just to check if it works, and then I'm just going to console log it. Okay save that and then go back to the browser and there's nothing so it looks like it works but if we go ahead and we change the name again here the file name go back then you will get this um, error not found so um, yeah that's how it is let's change it back to the right name again so it works okay and let's move on so yeah that that's pretty cool so now we are going to we check for the error here but if there's no error we might as well continue here and do what we want to do and what we want to do is we want to get an array buffer and you get uh, from the response if everything is okay there are no errors then you get an array buffer from that and that is just a way to represent a file as an array 
Um, so let's create that and call it array buffer. And that's going to be equal to the response and the array buffer method on that. Um, so we can see what's going to happen here. And if I go back to the browser again, nothing's uh, going to happen, actually. Um, also, I need to put a weight on this one because this takes some time to go go ahead and, uh, and create this one. So we, we don't want to continue until we have done that because uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a second because we're going to use this array buffer as uh, to put to create our audio buffer, which is what we need to for the web audio ABI to, to play the file. So let's create that one. It's going to be the audio buffer. And uh, we're also going to await uh, this and then that is, this is our audio context ctx we put that on the instance remember and then there is another method called decode uh, audio data and that means that we're taking this uh, whatever this returns this fetch this file it, it makes an array buffer from that right here and then we're going to take that array buffer and pass into the method decode audio data that is on the audio context. And then that will return something that we can actually work with with the web audio API. So I'm going to pass in the array buffer. OK. I'm going to save that. And uh, a funny thing I want to do here, I, let me just um, delete this await here and then save it. And then you can see here, if I if I save it, you say it failed to execute decode audio data on base audio context parameter one is not of type array buffer. What we're doing is we're telling uh, the computer to go and get this. And then after that, it's just going to, it's not going to wait for anyone. It's just going to continue to this one. So that's why we don't have this one ready yet. So that's why we have to await this one until we get it, until we have it, and then we can continue. Okay. And the same goes for this one here, because if we just return right now, we're, we're not getting anything uh, if we don't have a wait. So I'm going to return the um, audio buffer. So just like that. But before we do that, let's console log the audio buffer. So we get some information here. And as you can see, we have the duration. This is uh, this file is 52 seconds long. Um, and th the length is actually how, what do you call it? How many sample frames are in this? And number of channels, we only have one channel, so it's mono. And this is the sample rate. Now we got this going on here. We can see that uh, we're initializing this one here. And then inside the initialization method, we get uh, the audio, but we set the audio buffer uh, to get file. So that's we, we are setting it on the instance and then we get the file here and then we return the audio buffer. So now we have this on the instance uh, so we can use it elsewhere. Uh, and we're going to use that in the next method we are going to create here. And this is actually where we are going to play the sample. And this doesn't have to be an asynchronous function. So I'm going to call that play. Um, and then just let's pass in the sample name. First of all here, we want to have a source. That's what I talked about before. We need to tell the audio context. We need to tell the web audio API where this is coming from and that is coming from somewhere. So we need to set a sample source. So I'm going to call that sample source. And that is going to be equal this, oops. Uh, CTX, which is our audio context. And that is going to be create buffer source. Method that is on the, the audio context. This is used to create a new audio buffer source node where we can, we can use to play the data with. The next thing we're going to need is to set on this sample source that we get returned from this one here. Um, we have to set the buffer, and that is the audio buffer. So um, that is going to be sample source. And then we set the buffer on that, just like this. And that is, of course, going to be this audio buffer. OK? And that is the one we just created here. We returned it here, and then we set it on the instance up here, right? So now that we have that, 
we need to connect it to the destination and that is our speakers or headphones or whatever you have connected to your computer so we can take the sample source and we can connect use the connect method and we just want to connect it to the audio context destination so now everything is set up and everything should be ready to play right now um, and let's try and see if it works the way we do that we could just say sample source and use the play method on it oh sorry the start method and we don't really need to pass anything into this just to see if it works so i'm just going to save this and we're not hearing anything because of course we have to play it so right down here after this i'm going to go a b c play and then see what happens okay so this i think is because the audio context was not allowed to start it must be resumed or created by a user gesture, which is okay. Uh, so we're gonna go to our index file and just create a button. And let's call that button and just call it start. And uh, that's fine. Let's go back to our app.js and then down here, we can say, um, uh, document query selector. And that is just gonna be a button it to do and then I'm gonna take the button add event listener to that and that's gonna be a click event and we want to fire a function which will take this one and play let's see if that works now so now we can see our start button appears a, B, and you can hear the alphabet begins. It's awesome. So it works. E I'm just gonna F G just gonna save it again so we don't hear that stuff all the time. Um, so that works. And what is happening right now? It's just taking the file and it's only just playing it from start to the end. Um, and it's important. You need some kind of uh, user input in order to to start a sound, which is nice in a way. That's uh, what all browsers have implemented so you can't just um, when you open a pop-up an advertisement or something like that start playing music or sounds or things like that that's kind of irritating uh, so that's a good thing so uh, it works so far but let's move along remember we have this and this uh, object here we can see where the different sounds begin and uh, the duration of the sounds all of this is in milliseconds uh, and the web audio API actually you can set in here where when do you want to start this and a way you can put in the start time is to uh, on the audio context CTX this CTX CTX there is uh, a current time and that means exactly what time it is right now so you have to tell it when you want it to start you want it to start right away but then what time uh, what index or what how many seconds into the sample do you want it to begin playing? And let's just try to say 10 seconds in here. And then the third argument is actually the duration, which is the one we have down here. Uh, we don't need that right now. Let's let's test this here and let's see if it works. I'm gonna go back to the browser. I'm gonna click. F oh, it started on F G. and G. So H. that means that about 10 seconds in, and you can see that funnily enough, 10 seconds in, it starts on an F. So we're gonna use that here, but uh, remember we, need to convert uh, milliseconds to seconds so all the way up here uh, now we're going to start using the the thing that we pass into it here and that is going to be um, we're going to make a start time variable and that is going to be the samples remember this is just the one that we pass in here the samples this is the sprite and then we're going to take the sample name so that can be a b c d whatever it is so we're just going to call sample uh name so that's the one we pass into it here which is a b c and so on and so forth and then we want to because we want the first one we want the start time and that is the first position in this array so that is just going to be zero and 
and let's do it for the other. Let's just copy this one because it's going to be I'm not going to call it start time. We are going to call it duration, how long it lasts. And that is going to be one here. So that's going to be this one here. So now we have that inside our uh, variables here. So now we can use them down here. So we're still going to keep this uh, current time when we want to start it. But we, we're going to pass in start time here. And we're going to pass in duration. And now we should be able to, when we go down here, and let's, I'm just going to close this down so we don't see it. Um, now we're going to pass something into the play method here. Maybe I want to only play the G when I click the button. No, that didn't work. G of undefined. Let's see. Okay, so that's because I, I use samples here. We don't have anything called samples on this object. It's actually called sprite. And uh, you can see that down here. It's called sprite. So that's my bad. I'm going to save that. And then we're probably, let's go and test it here. Start, nothing happens. And I know why. And that is exactly because, remember, we have to convert the milliseconds to, to seconds. So we're just going to have to divide this by a 1,000. Do the same for this one here. Save that. G. It says G. Let's say we want. Uh, it's gonna close this one down. A. It's gonna be A. A. Uh huh. And if we want to have a K. K. It's K. So this already works. This is how you make it. How you use it. But let's just do something with this. I'm going to set up an, an event listener for my keyboard. So every time you type uh, a key, it'll it'll uh, read that key out loud. So let's let's do that. Inside our index HTML file, let's first of all remove the button here. And let's just make a div and give it a class name of key. So that's what we're going to be doing here. I'm just going to put a K in here just to check what it looks like. Because I want to go to the, um, to the styles, the CSS. And in here, I want to take the whole body and I just want to say display flex so we can display the K or the letter that we're hitting in the middle. So display flex. Then we're going to set the width and the height or just the height actually. I'm going to set that to 100 viewport height. And then we're going to justify the content to center. And we're going to align the items. Uh, sorry, that's align items, which is also going to be center. Okay, so that'll uh, put everything in the in the center. Hopefully, as you can see, the K is right here right now. All right, um, let's go back. Then what we want to do here, we want to target the key. And inside here, let's just pick another font that's prettier. So font family, I'm going to go with Roboto. That's a beautiful font. And then I'm going to set it to be bold. So font weight is going to be bold. And the size is going to be bigger. So font size is going to be, let's say, 200 pixels. And I'm going to give it a color of F1 6969. And let's just give it a shadow just to make it a little bit prettier. So text shadow. Um, let's give it a two pixel, two pixel, and 10 pixel blur. And then it's just going to be like a gray color, 70, 70, 70, like that. And then I'm going to save that, and we can go back. Now we can see, OK, we have this K here, and uh, that's awesome. Actually, I just noticed that we have a problem here. Uh, yeah, because we don't have the button anymore. I just deleted that, so we're not going to need that anymore. Okay, but that's fine. So we can go back to our JavaScript here, and then we can uh, we don't need the button here anymore. Um, and we do need the event list, but let's just get rid of this and start from scratch. So back here in our JS, we are going to um, to listen for a key press uh, and add an event listener to the document. And then we're going to do something for every single time someone hits the key. So let's put that into a constant here and call it key press. And that is going to be equal to document, document, if 
I could spell it is correct isn't it? yes it is <laughs> add event listener and the event listener we're going to add is the key down event so every time someone hits the key um, we want to run another function every time this happens and we want to use the event so I'm gonna to have to remember to pass that into here uh, so inside this one here we want to get the div right here the div with the class of key so we can change the the letter so let's do that first we can put that in another constant we'll just call it the key div uh, and that's also going to be document uh, query selector and that was a class name of key right okay and then we can set the inner text key div um, actually let's just um, console log uh, the event that we're passing in and just the key on this event let's see what that looks like uh, I'm gonna go to the browser again and then to the console and I'm gonna hit D now oops I'm gonna click up here D so every time I hit uh, I, I actually get the letter here and that's what we want to set here so um, do, 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 do. we just want to take the key div and set the inner text to E key let's go check if that works so every time I click you can see the letter changes over here we want it to be uppercase I think so let's just run it to uppercase method on this okay that's it yeah that works so now we don't have to initialize this one with a K that was just to see what it would look like so now I can just whoop do this so that works so now we have to play the audio the the file the, the <laughs> corresponding sound and um, I'm gonna make a separate function for that I'm just gonna call it play key so I'm gonna delete the console lock here and then I'm gonna play key and then of course I want to pass in the event that we're getting here because we're gonna use that above here why not above uh, const that's going to be play key and that is a function an arrow function oops and we also need to take in the event because we're going to use that okay then I could go and say if this event so I can console lock event let's see what happens then um, when I I'm gonna hit the G here and then I get this keyboard event and I get all of these things here and I can uh, da -da -da. I can get the key code this is called key G we can actually use that we can also get the key that's the one I showed that's the one we're using for this one up here so in here we could go and we can say for every single one so if e uh, code we could use the code for example or just the e key is equal to a then we play a but uh, we don't want to write that many conditional statements here so let's instead put it into a loop so we can start a loop with good old for loop and for key in ABC samples and so this is the this is the one here that we are passing in so we get all of the keys here so we get ABC so it's gonna try for every single one of them here um, in this object we're gonna do something and here we're gonna put the conditional so if the E key event key is equal to that would be the key then do something um, ba -ba -ba. and what we want to do we want to take this instance and we want to play the key and that should work let's check it out let's go back here a, it works B, C, R, T. that's pretty cool so a, B, L, L, o, y, o. U. hello you so so that's how it's working um, and this is just a little bit sugar on top so uh, you can actually use it for many other things this is pretty useless but maybe you want to make a, a synthesizer maybe you want to make a keyboard maybe you want to make a drum machine or something so you can uh, uh, press your keyboard and uh, you can also use MIDI with the MIDI API I'm probably gonna make a video on that as well 
but uh, this is how you can use you can create your own audio sprites using the web audio api i know it was a little bit fast and i didn't explain all of the key concepts but i do have a plan about making an in-depth um, for beginners tutorial on uh, the web audio api so uh, i'm just testing out some things here and i thought this was interesting so i hope you thought it was interesting as well and uh, like and subscribe and share and i hope you like it have a good day